Hi, welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of The Weekly Wave. I'm Matthew Lyons. And I'm Aaron Johnson. And our special guest here today is writer for the Patriot Ledger, Mr. Jim Dorman. How are you? Great, thanks. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, excellent. It's a pretty good day. I feel like yeah. this week's kind of, even like after vacation, started out a bit slow. Hopefully it's going to start to pick up. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a wave week this week, so that might be a, a factor. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of our viewers don't have wave weeks. That's true. Yeah. So, so Mr. Dorman. Yes. <laughs> uh, you write for the Patriot Ledger. Correct. How long have you been doing that? Well, actually, uh, this month is uh, 20 years. Wow. Oh, yes. Somewhere around. Could be today. I'm not sure. At the, poly, the first article that I, that I did, it was definitely in uh, mid to late January. Uh, so we're almost at mid. So maybe a little bit later in, in, in the month. But it was 20 years ago, 2000. Wow. And how did you get started? Uh, well, I had always enjoyed writing, and I had never been published. I mean, I wasn't that young 20 years ago still. <laughs> um, and uh I, I took a class, an adult education class, on how to get published. Didn't really know how to go about getting published. I thought it was somebody, I didn't know, you know how that worked at all. So this was very step by step. You had to write a letter to, uh, well, come up with an idea and then write a letter to an editor pitching your story idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was really just going to be the class. And I came up with an idea. I love music. Um, and I noticed there were a lot of uh, folk, uh, like, coffee house type music clubs popping up around uh, on the South Shore area. So I, I pitched that as an idea, did exactly the way they said it, and lo and behold, I got an email from uh, the features editor at the Patriot Ledger, and uh, I was really, really surprised. And then I did a um, kind of a test article on it, and he liked my writing. Uh, and then I kind of got busy and forgot about it a little while. We, we kind of had some miscue on what I was going to write about uh, for an actual article. Um, and then the same, uh, it was a, a folk duo that played blues, came around again, and I said, this is a new year, it's a new millennium, <laughs> and I'm going to do this. So uh, I got in touch with him again, and he said, great, go ahead, do that. Get a picture from, the, uh, from their uh, record company and uh, need the article uh, by such and such a date and how long he wanted it to be. And I was like, oh, okay, I got, <laughs> I got an article. It? Yeah, and that was, that was the first one that I did. So, uh, And then they had it. You know, I wanted to do music. That was my idea to do music. But they had kind of a real need for theater. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of there were a lot of local theater uh, groups that they were trying to cover at that time. They do a little less now. Um, so there's a lot of community theater reviews needed. So I started jumping on that. And he said, "Can you do theater?" I said, "Yeah, I like theater. I I'll, I'll try that." <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun. So I started doing that, and uh, I could almost do it every weekend if if uh, uh, if I wanted to. And uh, one time I even did three in one weekend <laughs> so oh, wow. I was, yeah it's pretty gung-ho at that time so that was like go to a show on a Thursday or Friday night go to one on Saturday night you know write one the next day write one the next day and wow. you know so one day I had uh, had like a whole page I think of my <laughs> reviews so that was pretty cool so so you've been doing this for like 20 years you said yeah. how many articles do you think you've written over the years um you know it's not as many as you might think it's it's uh it's it's over 300 Oh, wow, uh, that was so well that I thought. <laughs> <laughs> there were some years where, you know, I, I you can't do it all the time. It's very, you know, it's very time consuming. Where I was, but there's some years where I was doing, uh, you know, eh, you know, not a real lot, maybe uh, 30 or 40. Maybe I don't know if I ever got to 50 in a year. That would be, you know, almost one a week. But uh, uh, nowadays uh, I do it kind of when I can or when they need it. Uh, a lot of times I'll get do a little more in the summertime. Hmm. When when school's out and have more time, but I try to fit in one. Sometimes I can can do it, but it does take up the whole you know your whole time. I already <laughs> work a lot, uh, work like two jobs here, <laughs> so um, uh, you know so it's kind of tough to get an interview done and then um, and then do, do whatever do whatever research, do an interview, write the article. But uh, I still manage to do. Uh, I probably I did one in December. I'm not working on one right now, but I would expect probably uh, probably do something pretty soon. Usually I'll hear from them or I'll come up with an idea. In fact, I just pitched an idea this, this morning, so we'll see you know, if that gets picked up on now or uh, at some time you know, in the future. It doesn't have to, it's not something that has to be done right now, but usually there is like a time element. It's usually like a show that's going to be opening and they want to get a preview out like you know, a few weeks in advance. In fact, that's what they say, calling it, they call it preview in advance article. Uh, and that's, that's really what drives a lot of things like the, the theater or whoever is, wants an article and they'll contact the, 
the paper, the editors, and say, hey, you know, we'd love it if you cover our, uh, you know, event. Or we need to, we're trying to sell more tickets for this event. Would you, in, you know, we have these people available for you to interview, and then I'll get an email or something like that. Would you like to interview this person or that person about this show or that show or uh, that kind of thing? But so a lot, not all the articles uh, start that way, but quite a few, quite a few. And but if you if you're feeling gung ho, you pitch articles. So you say, oh, you look at something you'd like to do, or um, you know, like one a uh, long time ago, uh, my, my favorite rock and roll band is the Allman Brothers. So uh, Dickie Betts is the lead guitarist, or was the lead guitarist in the Allman Brothers. Uh, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, you know, I've been listening to him all my life, you know. And I saw yeah. he had had some pro problems with the Allman Brothers, and got kicked out, and I saw he was coming to Cambridge, and. You know, I, I just, I got on the, uh, well, I probably emailed the uh, editor. They like email rather than phone calls. But, um, and uh, and they said, yeah, go for that. That'd be great. You know, talk about how he, any you know, problems, you know, with the Almond Brothers and was that going to get resolved or what were you, you know, and also just the new band. He had put together a new band and they were going to play a smaller venue. Uh, so, and he didn't respond at all, you know, and I was like, <laughs> oh, geez, you know, and that's because I was like kind of, this was different. Like usually somebody wants an article. You know, but this is kind of like, I don't know. But then I just about giving up. My editor said, just give it one more. Give it another try, you know. And I said, all right, put, it in, put another email in, and then, uh, boom, phone call. And I was like, you call him. Uh, here's his number. Call him tomorrow, you know, oh, wow. in the morning. And the next thing I know, I was talking to this, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame guy that, again, that I've been listening to all my life, and he's discussing – you know, how the band started, which to me was just kind of epic. Yeah. You know? awesome, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, while I was listening to it, and I still have the tape of that, and I have, you know, friends that, you know, they do want to listen to it once in a while or this kind of thing. And he was kind of like, sometimes you connect with people, which I think is just, um, you know, is, is the, one of the best parts to me. It's just like you're talking to them, and uh, you feel like it's going well. Like if people even listen to the tape of me talking about that. Geez, he really opened up, you know, to you. And that was kind of something that made me feel good. Uh, but he was like, oh, you know, Come on, come on, knock on the you know, knock on the door of the bus. I'll remember you. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right. <laughs> so I did get to meet him later wow. on. So uh, so that was kind of a cool thing. That was that was a long time ago. That but that was uh, that was one of the you know first really cool things. <laughs> yeah. You know, kind of like I can't believe this is happening. You know, yeah. we're getting to do this. So. If you could if you could meet someone and interview him, who would it be? Yeah. Like Billy Corgan. Ooh. I feel like it'd be Billy Corgan for you. A musician or like any celebrity? I, I feel like you'd be more of a mu musician because you do music reviews, right? I do, yeah. 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 Any musician? I think Dave Grohl would be pretty cool. So, Dave, Dave Grohl, if you're watching, come on the show. We'd <laughs> love to know. have you. Give it a shot. Yeah, Steve Carell would be awesome. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Steve Carell is not a rock star, Matt. Yeah. Oh, rock star specifically? Yeah. Okay. Or, or just like a musician. Musician. Yeah, Dave Grohl. Um, Billy Corgan would be cool. Jared Leto. He's a great musician. Yeah. What about you? I thought Jared Leto just did like movies or my. No, he's music. lead singer. Thirty Seconds to Mars. Oh yeah. It's a good band. So before every type of interview like that, I'm always kind of afraid that I'm gonna. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but on SNL with Chris Farley, they used to do like these interviews like with Paul McCartney or stuff, and he would just kind of not really have a question and <laughs> <laughs> say like, "Remember when you were in the Beatles?" You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> you know, and kind of you know that's always just kind of the joke. You know, are you gonna come up with good questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys probably think of that when you're doing doing the show, or you know, just want to come up with something that's gonna generate. The thing is, when I do my interviews, I can. You know, just go on to the next question. You guys, you guys are getting filmed, so yeah. <laughs> I don't have to be as slick as you guys. Yeah, that's improvising. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, back on yeah, to the topic sorry. of uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's good. of writing. Yeah. Um, does your job go like hand in hand because you are an educator? Yeah. Um, so do you see like you using the skills that you learn from here into your writing, or vice versa? Uh, well, definitely, there are some things that 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 go hand in hand. Stuff we want like to uh, instill in students, whether they're into journalism or just anything is that you know you have to do your homework and preparation and uh and and when you do that things just come out better you know when you kind of it's always everybody you know time is, is difficult but when you you know if you really kind of devote some energy into uh you know, doing the preparation that's why we're always trying to have people take notes and things like that because you kind of you know it's that's how you really learn something and become more expert at and that's why i want to feel when i'm interviewing someone it's like they feel like hey this guy's done his homework and yeah. he knows yeah. who i am and he understands and that's kind of where you get this comfort level with people. And then, you know, your article or whatever you're going to present, you know, but to me, for me, an article is going to be that much better. I mean, when I was, when I, when I was in school, uh, you know, I started this before I was in education, but <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was in insurance. And, uh, uh, but, you know, there were things like that there too. But still, some of the things that I've learned, you know, learned or used 
I learned way back in high school. I know that some of my English teachers taught me how to, you know, how to do a paper, and I've used that in college. I used it, my first, you know, my articles. Uh, it was all about uh, really breaking things down and uh, uh, into pieces, uh, and that's kind of that was the big thing that I learned on how to do it, like a like a regular research paper, you know, which I. That's kind of, I broke the, I broke the articles down. When I first started writing articles, I would take other people's articles that were similar, that I knew that I was going to be writing, and I would uh, pull them apart. Say, okay, what was this paragraph about? You know, because really just paraphrase, what was that whole paragraph about? Did it have a, you know, one, you know, a certain thing? So, and then, and then it went to this, and I'd have like, almost like a math equation. You know, it was this plus this plus that, and you know, yeah. it was all flowed. And those are my, my best articles that's what they usually do. Maybe there's something at the end that refers back to the beginning yeah. or it had a really strong uh, hook or an introduction, you know? So you basically just like break down all your articles and like kind of like diagram it in a sense? Uh, um, well, I broke down other people's articles and then I kind of modeled mine. So I modeled mine after theirs, you know? Oh, so, and it's, I mean, that's kind of the same idea as, uh, you know, you can't, well... Maybe a little bit different, but I mean, when you when you first doing something, you need a recipe like make cooking something or something <laughs> like that, you know. Then then you can start breaking the rules, and you know. So I certainly break the rules or everything or whatever. I wasn't sure what the rules were. They just said go ahead and do it. I had to figure. Yeah. <laughs> I had to figure out, you know, I, but how to do it. But one of the other things I did was I wanted to know what their expectations were without having the benefit of, you know, come on in for a class and we'll go over all the expectations. Yeah. No, it was going to be, and you're going to find things in life like that. They're just going to say. You know, go go ahead and do it. You know, and if it's good, they'll like it, right? So, um, so I had to kind of design my own class. His okay, most looks like every most of these articles have some sort of a quick little lead thing, you know, that <laughs> draws people's attention. Or they always some people go in a little historical stuff on uh, either the artist or the you know did a lot of uh, uh, musicals and uh, plays and stuff. So what, did they win any Tony awards for this? Mm. You know that kind of thing. So anyway, I would just. And they weren't always the same, Every, you know, was, but, but uh, they have some sort of format. I'd probably make, you know, new formats up all the time, but uh, I don't know. I, I was, wasn't sure what the guidelines were. Maybe I was a little nervous about it. It was going to be a lot of people reading this, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see it. So that's, that's what it was. You know, it's like, uh, like a graphic organizer, you know, yeah. I guess. All right. So, that's cool. Yeah. So I just have one more yeah. question for you. So out of the 300 articles you've written, right. do you have one that you'll always remember, one that uh, kind of stands out? You know, I, I, I don't have, like, any particular one, um, so that's kind of a difficult question. Um, but I think about uh, – I could, like, say some of the reviews are just the most fun to write because you could just get really creative about it. Like, I would just – if I saw a musical I, I, I loved uh, and the songs were uh, great and different actors were great, I mean, I know I was just going to, like, plug in all these things and i go back and read. Those are the best, like, descriptions I had. Yeah. But um, – uh, if I did more of like a like I did some stuff that we haven't really talked about, which was like features on places and things to do and stuff. I did a travel article uh, oh, yeah. uh, on um, Block Island down off of Rhode Island, which it was you know my kind of concept of the whole thing. So sometimes I, it was I'll, I'll kind of go with one that was kind of similar to that, which was a feature on Plymouth Harbor and all the different places you can go around Plymouth, which is totally different than the entertainment type side of things, but. Uh, I, it was my idea to do it. Uh, the paper said, go ahead and do that. I went down and talked to different people about uh, different restaurants and um, establishments <laughs> that people could go to and enjoy uh, down there. And I tried to capture through my descriptions what it was like to go to each place. And then, you know, the, the paper sent a photographer down there. Uh, I got to go into kitchens. I got fed by these different oh, people. Oh, that's, uh, that's the best. You know, so, uh, and it took a long, it, was, it, it, it took a little while to go th- and I had, you know, set up all the interviews for all different people and go around and, um, uh, and, and then, you know, when you put it all together, you know, I just try to be as descriptive and catch the vibe of each place um, in, in a kind of real lively manner. Uh, the paper liked it so much that they kind of featured it like that whole week was like Thursday is going to be, you know, <laughs> Jim Dorman's, you know, Plymouth Harbor or whatever, well, probably the Plymouth, you know, and they had awesome pictures of people that I didn't, hadn't even met because the photographer went down there a different time, but they get paid more too, the photographers, I don't like that. <laughs> that was my whole idea, but um, so that's one of those, I think maybe the Plymouth Harbor one was, was pretty cool, and uh, uh, and then I just recently, well, not recently, not last summer, but the summer before, did uh, uh, the guys who make the uh, Patriots videos, the stuff, stuff uh, Patriots fans say, or something, you know, it's uh, uh, and they do these videos. Uh, it's it's uh, George Kippenhan, uh, 
uh, Nick Stevens and um, Jerry, well, sometimes it was Jerry Thornton, but they, they go around and do kind of local scenes and they write a bunch of jokes and people enjoy it, and, you know, depending on what's going on with the Patriots. I don't know what they'll do now. <laughs> they'll yeah. do one, you know, after they've lost now. And it ended up on the front page of the, of the paper, not the front page of the, you know, the entertainment section, which is, which is good. I, I like that. Um, but the front page, I had no idea that it would go on and end up being on the front page of the paper. So that was kind of a cool one. Okay, long answer. Sorry about that. Oh, no, 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 it was awesome. <laughs> no, it was really interesting hearing yeah. about you your Plymouth one because, yeah. I don't know, like, because we've both been down, like, the Plymouth pl uh, Plantation and yeah. the harbor and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to read it up after to see all these nice little places the next time I take a little vacation. I'll yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little while ago. You could probably, I'm sure you could find it, but uh, it's uh, some of the places may not be there anymore. But you could, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, definitely, I know. It's kind of a funny thing with restaurants, you know, and, and bars and stuff like that. They kind of come and go. Yeah. You know, East Bay Grill is there, and there's, there are a few others that are probably still there. But uh, that was something that they were trying to cover a lot Um you know that that I, I kind of enjoy doing. I haven't done it in a while, so I was let me you know talking to you guys. I was like maybe should try to revive that. You know, <laughs> throw that in. I mean, you can't you can't beat free food. Oh, I mean, that's got to be. Uh, yeah, one time I did one in um, Central Square in uh, in Cambridge, and uh, there's a great movie theater if you want to go like independent movies uh and uh central i think maybe central square cinema but there's all these restaurants and bars that are all around there and they kind of wanted it's the same kind of thing you know and oh some of the places were i you know called ahead and i went in there it was like you know they, they were just bringing you know yeah. <laughs> great little things to try or something you know or just taste this or so you get treated pretty well i mean i just gotta sometimes it's you know people want the they want the press so sometimes you get treated <laughs> really nice yeah. whether it's yeah. you know getting to talk to somebody or getting a nice seat at the at the concert or the the movie theater well I haven't done any movie theaters like, that's another thing but uh, at the at the uh, regular theater uh, but uh, yeah sometimes uh, you just get a little you get that a a plus treatment yeah. Do we have time for one more St quick story oh yeah sure go ahead. Uh, because that was goes going along with that. One time, they, I did a story. I was uh, Big Apple Circus, and um, they had like press night. So they um, invited me after I, I I interviewed the um, the ringmaster, and they were really like I got a lot of great you know feedback on that, which was great. You know, they really loved the article. But then they were having when they have press night, they invite a lot of different press people. So I found myself in the middle of like all the people you see <laughs> on TV, like all oh, wow. the awesome. you know J C Monahan and Bianca De La Garza. It was a couple of years ago, so she's not in the news anymore. But uh, <laughs> you know, all these people I was normally watching it, I'm like, just, like stand, sitting all in the middle of them. I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> so. All right, I'll just keep going. You better stop. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> thank you so for much coming on. on. Show. Yeah, this is a great, great interview. Episode. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it because you guys, you guys do awesome, and, and uh, I really enjoy what you're doing. Keep it up. Thank you. Sweet. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week to see a brand new episode of the Weekly Wave. Make sure to follow us on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the Green Gazette. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>